zero in on the topic today. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. If they, if they sin, yeah, if they listen to you, you have won them over. So in other words, he's saying, your brother or sister is talking about the fellow believer. He said, when you do something wrong, or I do something wrong, don't go talking about it everywhere. Just come to me first, one-on-one, -on -one to say, hey, brother, this is what you did, and I'm not pleased with it. And I like, I, maybe I'm not even aware. It's possible that I could do something and not be aware, if you know what I mean. Or you could do something and not be aware. So instead of, God, Jesus is the one giving instructions here. He said, instead of you going, you know how we, we used to share things in church in the in gossiping about one another in the name of, oh, please pray for that brother. We need to pray for each other. You know, what we call, we, that is holy gossips. You know, gossip is gossip. Whether there's nothing like holy gossip. You know what I'm saying? So when we, we talk about, oh, yeah, that's so, 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 uh, oh, and then we finish it in a religious way. Oh, please, let's pray for her or pray for him. No, it says, if I did something wrong, you got to come to me. If you did something wrong, I got to come to you. And now he says, when I come to you, when you come to me and I listen to you, you have won me over. Two, two gains there. We have resolved the issue so our relationship is not dented or destroyed. And on the other hand too, it has given us a better platform to continue to grow stronger together. If you know what I mean. But if I go around talking about what you have done or what I have done to you, go around talking about it with somebody else, we are painting each other with black ink and the unbeliever is watching how you are doing. Remember the saying, he who casts stones lose ground? When I talk ill about you, I'm losing my respect. If you know what I mean. But now he says, but if they will not listen, take one or two others along. From within the church, not outside the church. Not an unbeliever. This is talking to you and I as believers. Then he says, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. Can you see the process? One first, then if it doesn't work out, two or three. If it doesn't work out, bring it to the family meeting. Church is family, you know that. Sometimes, the way we live in our society, we do not regard church as family because we only meet on Sundays in the morning for 15 minutes. Do you know that family, if I needed something and is, let's, I give a, a perfect example. If my blood brother or sister was not a Christian, and you are the Christian, if I needed something, needed help, I won't call them, I should call you first. Because you are family to me. Oh yeah. Because the blood of Jesus that holds us together is stronger than the biological blood that brought us together. I hope you know that. <laughs> This is the reason why when we don't see each other, we should check on one another and really pray and support one another. The blood of Jesus is stronger than the blood of my father that held me to mine. You know what I'm saying? But what we do is that we, we treat, oh, he's just a church member. We don't know why. You know, he just comes to church. The Bible says, he who is in Christ is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things, including our thinking, should be made new. Amen. 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 So he says, bring it to the church. And if they refuse to listen, even to the church, then treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. It doesn't mean bash them and kick them out. If you treat an unbeliever like that, you say treat them like an, as if they were unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And how do you treat an unbeliever? You treat an unbeliever with love. Amen. You treat an unbeliever with respect. Mm -hmm. Hoping that one day he or she will come into the family. When you say treat a non-believer, treat him like a non-believer, it doesn't mean don't you should cut off from him. I remember those days in my daddy's church, maybe it was because there was not not much knowledge. They excommunicate you and they don't talk to you. Everybody you sit at the back, you are all by yourself, like somebody with leprosy. You know, and that time I used to see it and I felt, well, maybe this what goes on there. 
you know, but I didn't know any better either. But when we don't love the unbeliever, you know how another extreme we take is that sometimes we look at unbeliever as them and we are us. No, that is religion. Amen. An unbeliever should be, you know how Jesus did it? Jesus did not hang around church too much. He went looking for those who have not yet heard the, the God, good news so they can hear. So that is the reason why we pack it. Why do we do video recording, Facebook? Why do we send tracts? Why do we do all the things we do in church? It's because to win an unbeliever. It's not so much for you. You can read the Bible. If you know what I mean. Amen. So he said, re, 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 report to the church. If he doesn't listen, then treat him as somebody who is not conscious yet. Who is not alive. He doesn't have the way without to understand the truth you are teaching here. So be tender, be gentle, be loving, be patient, be long-suffering, you know what I'm saying? As the unbeliever. Amen? When he says tax collector, he's not talking about CRA. <laughs> I know nobody loves CRA. Anybody here, CRA ever called you to say, how are you doing? How's your finances? I hope you're doing well. They never call. The only time they call you is when they want money. Am I right? Now, yeah. this is different. Now, look at verse 18. You can see the context. We are looking at it in context. We are looking at this scripture today in context because sometimes we, we disregard this upper section and focus on the 18. And when we disregard this upper section and focus on the 18, it's just like saying, you only love my arm, you don't love the rest of my body. That's why sometimes it doesn't work. So in other words, when there should be no sin among us, number one, there should be genuine love, nobody painting each other black, hurting each other, castigating, gossiping. There should, we should be tight, we should, we should be closed, we should be honest, we should be open, we should be you know, supportive, loving, encouraging. When we do that, then he said, truly, I tell you, Whatever, because you are now one people here, now whatever you decide on earth, right? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So in other words, what he's saying is, if the brother here does not listen, and whatever decision that you take regarding that brother or the sister, God honors it the same way. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Okay, good. So, it says, whatever we bind. So, sometimes, if I disregard everything, go up here, don't pay attention to loving my neighbor, being honest, and all the, the things, and I come in here to bind the devil, God will say, uh, uh, you are using the right formula, but you are using it wrongly. If you know what I mean. Now look at this. It says, so truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth shall agree about anything that they shall ask. He said two of you. Not just two anyway. Two of you, the church. Two of you, the church. Two of what? You, the church. Two of us, the church, shall agree on earth as concerning anything that we shall ask. What did he say? It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. Amen. Thank you. Oh, God is good. Amen. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. The greatest power rests today, not of the politicians. Politicians should not decide what happens in the world. The church should decide. Amen? Amen. But the reason why the, ch the church is not deciding is because the church gave her position to the politicians. We should not elect somebody who does not have the same values that will honor the Lord. Makes no sense. Praise God. Amen? Amen. But the Bible says we should respect our leaders. The fact that he's not a Christian doesn't mean we disrespect them. 
We respect them. We obey authority. That's what the Bible teaches. But the highest authority rests on you and I. And the rest of you and I, where you and I are able to do the part that we are supposed to do from the top. Let's look at this. Look at your bulletin here. I put a few points there, if you don't mind. From the bullet point, it says, when two or three are gathered together, he indicate that meetings of his people, indeed, Meetings full of power and authority connected to heaven do not need to be large meetings or large gatherings. They can be of two or three of his followers at a time. Amen? Amen? So what, what God is saying is, God wants you and I to be in agreement and when we are in agreement regarding anything that we desire, Anything that we desire, God will honor it. Amen. God will honor it. Amen. They say a family that sticks together or prays together stays, stays together. 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 Amen. When I, you see the witnesses in me, instead of comparing me with Mr. Brown and Mrs. Jones, you pray for me. Amen. You come over to me and say, hey, I noticed that uh, maybe you are not aware, but so and so is not going the way it should be. Are you aware of that? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Two or three are mentioned not to encourage absence. Because sometimes we can say, oh well, Bible says if two or three, so I don't need to go. I think there are two people over there. <laughs> I don't think that there are two, you know. No. But to cheer the faithful who do not forget the assembly, assembling of themselves together, as the matter of some is. Have you heard that scripture where in the book of uh, Deuteronomy 32 verse 30? Anybody know? help me out? Deuteronomy 32 verse 30? Anybody there help me out? Deuteronomy 32 verse 30. The Bible says, sometimes we use the scripture when it comes to marriage. It's not just for marriage. When the Bible says two are better than one. Yeah, please. Verse 30. How could one person chase a thousand of them and two people put ten thousand in life? How can one person chase a thousand of them and two people put ten thousand to flight? In other words, if, you, if I'm by myself, I can do just 10,000, uh, 1,000. But when I have you stand beside me, my potential and output See? See? That's why even in the church they say, I, I, you know, some churches say, you know, people say, oh, pastor is the one to make the, to do this one. Pastor does that, pastor does that. No, it doesn't work like that. Can one tree make a forest? Can one parent make a family? Praise God. doesn't work that way. Even in the business, it, it doesn't take, like, what is a factory? What is a factory? A factory is several people coming together to create something. A factory, group of people will come together to say we're designing a tambourine. The engineers will put the engine together. The farmers that make the plastic, they have to be contacted to supply the plastic. The people that mine iron or metal from the ground must be contacted, consulted with, and they should be. And then the smith, the people to smith it into shape, carve it into shape. Then you have the graphic artists and the designers. They all come together. Everybody doing his part. What are we creating? Just a tambourine. How many people will be involved? Much more than you can imagine. You understand something? For a church to function well, Every hand must be on deck. Everybody must be 
involved. For a family to run well, every hand must be on deck. There's nothing like, like in my family, I, I said to you know, my wife, I said, there is no man's role or no woman's role. Whatever you are able to do, just do it. You know, it's not a rule for another family. It's the rule in my family. You know, you say, oh, it's men that take out the trash. It's men that do the garden. It's men that wash the car. And then the women do the cooking. The women do the cleaning. No, we don't do that. We don't do that. If it's time to clean and I'm available, I clean. If it's time to, I do most of the cooking anyway. Until they say they don't like my cooking anymore. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? They say it's too healthy for them. But you know what I'm saying? Now, the, the reason is when roles are divided, the responsibility that is divided is divided to, to bring about order. There is nothing wrong with that. But sometimes the person who is to do the other part may not be disposed to do it. When we leave it for that, then it doesn't know. We should bear with one another, bearing with one another, accommodating one another, accommodating, celebrating, recognizing, appreciating, you know what I'm saying? Supporting, encouraging one another. Amen. amen. Come on, amen. amen. So Bible says two, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. For instance, it's only one person that was standing and because he wronged me yesterday, and then I kept on castigating and kept on bringing him, oh, because he did this. He's supposed to be a Christian. He speaks in tongues. He preaches the gospel. But how could he have done this? How could he? This church people are fake. You know what I'm saying? How people in the world talk about us? They say, these church people are fake. They cannot do, oh my goodness, I don't want to go to church anymore. There's no church. Hey, all these people are pretending. That's all they say. Why? Because I saw the weakness in my brother, and instead of covering it and dealing with it in, in the, within the closed doors, I shared with another person that I thought we, we, I will win, I have gotten his favor. And you know one thing? Sometimes, this is what I have learned, I, and I use this you know, you know, in counseling. Sometimes when we go out and we are talking about pointing the finger, oh, you know what he did to me? Oh, you know what she did to me? What? He's gone. He's already done. And I say to myself, honey, you gotta grow up. Grow up and start and stop looking for sympathy. It's sympathy we're just looking for. The thing has been done. It's not gonna be undone. So why talk about it too much? If you know what I mean. If it's not gonna be undone, why talk about it? <clears throat> so what we can do for one another is this is what the Bible is teaching, and this is what the, the values, our values should be. We stand together. Did he fall? Yes, he did. Did he make an error? Yes, he did. What do I do? I pick him up first, drag him into the house, then when I close the door, I can punch him if I want. But I'm not going to punch him to, the, to every eye outside, if you know what I mean. No, you can punch me if you want, but you got to punch me in the thumb. <coughs> Within the family. Does that make sense? Praise God. Praise the Lord. We rebuke each other and help each other when the doors are closed. Somebody said, oh, so you want to cover up sin. No, you're not covering up sin. Because the way you are handling me will determine how strong you will be tomorrow or how weak you will be. When you cast me down, don't think you are stronger. No. When you cast me down, don't think you are strong. And nobody's casting me down. I'm just speaking, speaking scriptures, okay? And I'm using myself as the example. If I cast you down, I become weaker. That's what I'm saying. If I change your image, I lose credibility. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I do not honor you, promote you, and build you up, I become weaker tomorrow. Because at the end of the day, we already belong to one family. Standing side by side, let me come please. Standing side by side, if I some something pushes me from there, I lean on her, correct? Amen. And if something pushes her from there, she leans on me. Amen. That is why the Bible says two are better than one. Right. Two are better than one. That is number one. He said, For if one falls, the other will pick him up. 
And if they lie down together, they keep each other. It's not when it's they lying down together. It's not talking about lying down in marriage. It's talking about whatever condition you are in, you keep each other encouraged and warm, cheered up. Have you ever been stranded in a, somewhere and you're all by yourself? You don't have anybody to talk to? That's when you check your phone and look, hoping there's a message, no message coming. You know, how do you feel when your battery is dead on the phone? You feel very frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. And there's no internet for you to connect. Because we have been retrained to think that we have to be influenced from the outside constantly to make us feel like we are alive. The external influence, we've been trained to accept it and make it a norm. You know what I'm saying? There's also a good time for you to just be quiet, shut down things and remain quiet. Listen to your heart. Commune with God. Think about you. Think about God. Think about others. Let your spirit speak to you. Can I say something here? So God speaks to us so much and so often. But many times we are not able to hear him because of the external influences. Oh, you got a text message when you are just about to pray. Mm -hmm. You are just about, a scripture just came into your memory. But you didn't have time to think about it because the phone rang. Or because somebody, there's another appointment. So we run like, you know how they did, how do you call the go bus from one street to another, running all the way till evening, one out and you pass out in bed, get up the next morning running, you know. In other words, if you are not busy, that something must be wrong with you. Let's go back to my point. My point is, when you build me up, you become stronger. When I build you up, I become stronger. Amen. Amen. When you build me up, you become stronger. When I build you up, I become stronger. When I treat you in love, when I stand to exercise my authority, God hears me. When I do not treat you in love, when I stand up to exercise my authority, God does not hear us. Mm. Because the Bible says God does not hear the prayer of sinners. Mm -hmm. He says, I tell you the truth, if two of you shall agree on anything, that they shall ask. It shall be done for them. So sometimes some of the things we pray for is not because God has not, God is, doesn't want, it's not, it's not that it's not God's will, it's because we have not put the puzzle the proper way. You know what I'm saying? You didn't put the puzzle the proper way. You build your house, you raise the wall, there's no roof, and you want to start painting and hanging the, the drapes. It doesn't work that way. The rain will mess it up. Praise God. You have not laid the floor, you're already buying the rug. And you are coming to measure. The floor has to be laid first before you buy the rug. Right? So if we can do our part, God will do his part. But remember, as the body of Christ, the greatest authority on earth does not rest upon the shoulder of God. It rests upon the shoulder of the church. Amen. That is why Jesus said, for whatever, he said, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Then he said, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth. Paul, Peter, Peter, Jesus was speaking to Peter in Matthew 16. And the same discourse that he was, he kept going, and it was a, an interaction, interception, interaction. Then chapter 18, then he says, I tell you the truth, whatever, that is what the scripture we are looking at today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, praise God. Amen. Come on, praise God. Amen. I remember many, a few years ago, when I was much younger in the faith, I'm still growing, I haven't, you know, matured yet. You know, when we used to, I used to run to God with, you know, something going on, I just run to God in prayers immediately. And God will stop me, the Spirit of God will stop me and say, on what are you standing? So I have to go and find the scripture, discover what his will has said about that verse, before I will come over, and then, even when you are looking at the scripture, you know, it judges you, right? It, it makes, you see, it's, you can see where you are wrong. So sometimes, as, as I'm looking at the scripture, sometimes I don't, I end up not praying anymore, because 
It is not to talk to God that I was supposed to do. It's to correct something and then God will do His part. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? Praise God. Now, faith is the substance of things you hope for, the proof of the things you have not seen. Amen? When you say whatever you buy on earth shall be bound in heaven, and sometimes we look forward to see, oh, is anything being bound? You don't worry about God's part. Just worry about your part. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We shouldn't worry about God's part. We should worry about our part. Yeah. When I do my part, I don't need to remind God of his part. Right. When I do my part, God does his part. Amen? Amen. He said, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, will he give to the person who gives? I'm not going to wait to see the good measure pressed down, shaking together first. I have to first do my giving, and I give him thanks because he doesn't forget. He's faithful. He's faithful. Amen. 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 Praise God. When I study the word of God, what happens? It becomes healing to all my flesh. Am I right? And it gives me wisdom. Praise God. It gives me wisdom. The word of God gives you, renews your mind. Instead of praying for, you know how we used to say, Lord, please give me wisdom. Let me make a cheap, a cheap recommendation, easy recommendation. Study the word of God. Study the word of God. You'll be very intelligent, very, gives you wisdom. It gives you the kind of wisdom that the people outside the church will not understand. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, as we are here to partake of the table of the Lord in the communion, what happens is we are agreeing that Jesus Christ died for us. And because he lives, we shall also live. Correct? Yes. Because he lives, we shall also what? Live. live. Because he lives, can you say, I shall live? I shall live. Say, I shall live. I shall live. Say, I walk in love. I walk in love. And I do not castigate my neighbor. And I do not cast again my name. Yes, I walk in love. I am a builder, a not builder, a destroyer. Not a destroyer. Yeah, I am a builder. I am a builder, not a destroyer. Not a destroyer. I'm an encourager. I'm an encourager. I'm a life giver. Life giver. Not a life taker. Not a life taker. I shall live. I shall live. I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall declare. I shall declare the works of the Lord. The works of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So when Jesus Christ went to the cross, what did he do for us? He did the will of the Father. He gave his life so that we can live. Amen. Amen. So the covenant that we have with him is the same covenant that we practice here every time we have a communion. Excuse me. We are reminding ourselves that His blood that brought us into covenant relationship with His Father, who is now our Father, was shared on our behalf. So I don't stand on my own righteousness anymore because if it was my own righteousness, my own, in fact, I can't even spell the righteousness in action well, if you know what I mean. I'm not talking about the letter. I'm talking about living it. My own righteousness, when I look at it, there's nothing to see. But when I take his righteousness as my righteousness, then I can stand with confidence before the Father. Amen. Praise God. And the Bible says his body was broken so that ours might be healed. Amen. Amen. Book of Isaiah 53. Say the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. He said we were healed. We are not being healed. We were healed already. That is why now you and I have the boldness to claim the healing. Because it's already written down. It's part of the constitution of God. It's part of the law. Amen? Amen. He healed us when his body was scarred and minced with the whips that he received. 
He purchased our freedom when his blood was spilled on the cross. So he's not just making up his mind whether to save you or forgive you today. He forgave you a long time ago. Praise God. So now that is the reason why the church can boldly say, can claim the healing, can receive the forgiveness. And we can also sell, the for when I say sell, to preach the forgiveness. We can tell, talk to people. When we go, you know, you know what sends people to hell? It's not sin. Mm -hmm. That one is, uh, I'm going to repeat it. It's not sin that sends people to hell. Because sin has been painful. It is the refusal for the payment that sends people to hell. Mm. I was guilty. Somebody paid the price for me. But I say, no, I don't accept that price. If I don't accept the price, then I still have to pay my own. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah? 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But when I accept the price, what do I do? I say, thank you. I take the clean certificate that has been paid, receipt, and I go home to enjoy my life. Praise mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Our sin has been paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Once and for all. 